What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 18 of our matplotlib tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to talk about is an example of using annotations to plot stock price outside of the graph, kind of. So when we plot a, a stock chart, uh, a lot of times it's it's hard to see. Like you can look at price on the left hand side there and you can kind of see what you know the current price is. But a lot of times we care very highly about what's like the current last price. So like with eBay, for example, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the current price is. I mean, I guess we would go with the close and it's probably here is the close or here is the close, but we really don't know. Uh, and that's anywhere between 61 and 61.5. Uh, so a lot of times what people want to do is they want to have an annotation of price over to the right hand side. So this would be like an example of a graphing application that's doing that. I just typed in like stock prices to Google images and found this. So a lot of graphing applications will do that. They'll annotate the price to the right hand side near where that last price is and then it moves. So it's really easy to, to find out, hey, what was the actual last price? So uh, a lot of people were asking me about this in my T. Kinter series and I just never got around to adding it. But this is how you do it. So we'll close out of this and close out of this and let's go ahead and add that now. And so with annotations, it's it's really not too much uh, on top of what we've already, you won't, really won't learn anything new just an example of you know putting this to work so uh, first I'm gonna get rid of these annotations here uh, so I'm just gonna highlight all of these and alt 3 that comments them out and in fact actually let's do let me just uh, leave a note here um, annotation example with arrow and then down here this was our uh, you know, font dict example and then finally um, I don't know, hard-coded text. Okay, and then I'll go like this, and now I'll three this. Okay, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to place, um, we'll, we would do like an annotation here, so we would say ax1.annotate, and what we would annotate here is something like uh, we would do the string of close p minus one so that's the you know, like what is the text that we want to annotate here well we want to annotate whatever the last price was but that's going to be an int so we're or actually to float but we want to convert that to a string so we're doing that first so that's the last price then we have to um like what are we annotating basically and so that would be like where is this going to be located so we want to annotate that uh and the annotate that it's like you know, basically pointing to is date minus one and then close p minus one uh, this one doesn't matter so much but it you know it could it depends on how you want to handle this but in our case it really won't make too much of a difference uh, and then now we're going to say xy text and before remember we did this as an axis fraction well we're not going to do that because we actually we want this to kind of move dynamically with the price so we would say xy text equals date minus one so what was the last date and then what we're going to do is we would add some to it because again this is actually the, if you pay attention you can see here this would be your spine and this would be your spine and the annotation of price is usually like off the charts so to speak it's it's off of the graph so we want the same thing so we're going to say the last date that's our x-axis so we're going to say the last date plus, uh, let's do four for now. And uh, so that will hopefully move us over quite a bit. And then where, you know, where is the Y that we want this? Well, generally you place that annotation dynamically up or down in accordance to the price. So for us, we, wanted, we want it to be exactly where that close P is. So uh, we're going to say close P minus one. And uh, that really can be it, but we can add a little bit more. So first let's like bring this up and let's see how that looks. Non-keyword argument, what are we doing here? X, Y, text, so we forgot to put this in parentheses there. Let's try it one more time. Oh, still getting invalid syntax here, what have we done? So we, I guess we just totally forgot, yeah, the uh, parentheses there. So now we can see that at least we have the price that we're running out. We don't really have the space here, so we can we'll fix that because we already have the adjustments there. So we have the price there, so we can see the last price was 60.99. So okay, 
Uh, we'll close this. Let's go to the bottom here. And on right, currently it says 0.94. We'll change that to 0.90. Uh, and then what we're going to do is come back up to our annotation here. Where are we? There we go. And now we can kind of customize that. So if you if you can see here, uh, we've got... Uh, so we actually will cover something new. Congratulations for those who didn't leave right away. So you've got like this little box here, right? Like we can, we can customize to handle for that kind of situation. So for example, um, after we give the XY text, we can give one more parameter here and we're gonna say BB, well, B box equals B box underscore props. And then we'll just add those props right up here. So now we're gonna say is B box underscore props equals, so these are just the box properties, right? So props, whenever you see that, it's like prop, short for properties. Um, we like to give nicknames to our things in Python because we're cool. And so bbox props will be the dict of, um, and then in here, uh, we're gonna say box style, and you can give a bunch of box styles. So uh, for those of you who don't know, you can always like, like I've tried to kind of illustrate before, if there's something you, you're just not, you don't know on uh, matplotlib or really any module, you go to Google and you type it in. So for it, in, in this example, if you want to know more about annotating with matplotlib, what are more, more of my options, you would type in matplotlib annotate. Hit enter on Google and you find yourself probably on this page. And so this gives us all the kind of examples of annotations that we might, might have. And then down here, uh, these are kind of like uh, the styles that are possible here and then these are kind of like visual examples of what those styles would look like so either round or maybe round four uh or the left arrow would be you know valid choices here uh, so let me move this over again and so we're going to say box style that's what we were just looking at was box styles we're going to say box style equals and we'll just do the round we'll choose that round option and then you can add padding if you want we're just going to i'm going to leave it alone for now and then you've got face color and edge color. Okay, so face color, we're gonna say the face color is white, and then the edge color uh, we'll make black, which is K. Uh, so W is short for white, K is black because B is blue. So anyway, uh, and then we can change the line width if we wanted. Um, I think we'll leave that for now. We'll say line width equals one, just so you can change it if you want, but that's about it. So there are a bunch of parameters there for our box here. Let's run it now and see what we're looking at. All right, so now you've got kind of like this uh, box here that has our price. Of course, our default load is still kind of, meh, we should kind of give ourselves some more space on the bottom and the left. So let's go ahead and change that too for those of you who are following linearly. Uh, so bottom, we'll give it 0.24 and left, we'll give 0.11 see how we do now beautiful we need a little bit more right though but anyway um, okay cool so that, that's looking pretty good so you could also do like uh, that gives us the price but you could also go with like the left arrow for example so instead of round we could do I think it was L arrow L arrow like that find out <laughs> yeah okay so there's that I'm just not I'm not like the biggest fan of that little arrow uh, I kind of like, you know, the round is probably my favorite, but the arrow is a little more uh, explicit in like what it's actually doing. So you can feel free to choose whatever you want. I'm going to go with the round though. I like that one the best, I think, or maybe round four. Whoops, not round four, round de four. That one's kind of good too. So I don't know. You can go with whatever you want. I think I'm gonna go back to round. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, uh, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.